Good morning, everyone. My name is Arabella Guevara, and I am a lead organizer for the Young Women's Freedom Center. We are proud co-sponsors of AB 1186. At the age of 13, I was placed on juvenile probation and spent the next five years in and out of incarceration. Most of these were technical violations, some even because the judge felt incarceration was a necessary answer to my own mental health needs. Being on juvenile probation often means continuous court dates, which parents are mandated and sometimes subpoenaed to attend. This meant my mother was forced to come into court, even if it meant she was at risk of losing her job. At one point, she did lose her job, and because we were unable to pay the rent, we were evicted. At 15 years old, I was sentenced to the girls' ranch in Santa Clara County. While I should have only been there for six to eight months, I didn't get released until 17 years old during the COVID-19 pandemic. As an adult, I now reflect on what support could have been in place to provide my mental and emotional health needs, which didn't include the added stress of $60,000 of debt by the time I was 18. Upon my release, I soon fell into homelessness and addiction due to unmet mental health needs of not just myself, but my entire family. I was also a victim to street violence and exploitation. During the time I was homeless, I notified my restitution caseworker that I was currently struggling to survive with my own daily needs and was unable to make my $300 to $600 monthly payments. My mother and I continued to receive daily threats that my missed payments would be garnished and we would be taken to court in addition to the money that was already garnished when I was released from the ranch. This was money that was meant to, re to fund me for my re-entry needs, as well as support my mom who was only making $1,500 a month and expected to make $300 a month rent payments. If it weren't for COVID um, renting regulations, she would have been evicted a lot sooner. I am now 20 years old, a mother, a fiance, but most importantly, a community leader and a survivor. I serve as a role model to show our young folks that even the most impacted have the potential to use their experiences to change the way the society and even we view ourselves. I've mentored system impacted youth, I've led legislative change in youth justice, and most of all, I've led healing and transformative justice circles to support youth like myself in understanding and working through harm they may have caused or even experienced. I'm one of very few folks who had support from other youth leaders and organizers who saw my voice as important and my story as sacred. I stand here today much different than the young woman who entered the system and who was a victim of exploitation and violence. Did added stress and continued cycles of poverty. The people and the restorative justice spaces that provided love, support, and patience were what made me whole enough to see others as, as whole beings. AB 1186 has the potential to do the same. I urge you to pass AB 1186 to ensure that youth are given the opportunity to grow into their potential as they learn the impact of harm. Young people do not deserve to be treated as unworthy of these opportunities, but deserve to be empowered and given appropriate support with extra barriers. Thank you.